Hello class, welcome back. I'm excited to have the opportunity to talk with you today. Uh, today we're going to be focusing on diagnosis and feedback. Uh, so the things that I want to focus on today are understanding the importance of diagnostic relationships in the OD process, um, being able to describe the methods for diagnosing and collecting data, understanding and utilizing techniques for analyzing data, understanding the importance of data feedback in the OD process, describing the desired characteristics of feedback content and describing the desired characteristics of the feedback process. Uh, that's a lot and we're going to give a brief overview on all these topics over the next 10 to 15 minutes um, to give you a start on the module materials. So first, uh, we've looked at this before where, where we've uh, explored the core activities involved in the data collection process. Now, in the last module, we talked more specifically about different data collection approaches. And this week, we're going to be talking more about how you analyze and feedback that data. So we start with planning to collect the data. And most of the teams uh, in the class are currently in this stage of the data collection feedback cycle. You're planning to collect the data. You're preparing interview questions or focus group questions. You're preparing survey questions. You're collecting um, secondary materials and archival data from the organization that you can analyze. Um, some of you are doing observations or planning to do observations. So this is the planning stage. Uh, once you're done with the planning stage and you get the client's buy-in to what you're trying to do and their approval to do what you plan to do, uh, then you move into the, the data collection stage. Uh, so most of the teams uh, in this class will be moving directly into this stage probably within the next week or two um, to collect your primary data or to be um, looking at your secondary data. I need to emphasize here that it's really important to get the buy-in of your client organization. They need to understand what you plan to do uh, with your data collection. Uh, they need to understand the methods you're using. They need to agree upon the method and particularly because they're going to be granting you access. They're going to be granting you access to the physical facilities, perhaps, um, or to the, the employees to interview or to do surveys. This all translates into lost productivity time for the organization. So they need to believe in what you're doing. You have to sell them on the data you need to collect and why and what it's going to do for them. And you need to communicate that to them clearly. Once they uh, sign off on, on your plan, then you collect the data and then you move into analyzing the data. Um, now, I'm not going to talk a ton about analyzing the data today, um, but there are many techniques to looking at the data that you collect, and it depends on the type of data you collect, whether it's qualitative or quantitative data. Um, it depends on your level of sophistication in terms of the types of data collection methods, as well as how you want to analyze it and what the organization can handle in terms of their understanding of data. Uh, particularly in terms of quantitative data. Generally speaking, just like I said previously in the data um, and the various uh, forms of data collection lecture, uh, it's nice to triangulate. So if you can have some qualitative and some quantitative approaches, uh, that's really helpful. And that give, allows you to paint a clearer picture using both hard data as well as um, anecdotes, stories, um, snippets of comments from uh, from participants or even um, themes in your observations that you can use in, in the analysis process that will be helpful once you get to the feedback process. Uh, so think about that. Think about how you can triangulate. Think about how you can utilize different methods and think about how you plan to analyze them. Generally speaking, I think most organizations don't have data sophistication to be able to understand regression analyses, um, hierarchical linear, linear models or other really complex, um, more difficult types of data analysis. Certainly for this class, I'm not expecting you to do any sort of analysis to that level. You're probably mostly going to be using descriptive statistics, means, um, perhaps distributions, um, uh, things of that nature, and then sharing it in a compelling visual way back with the organization. So think about how to visually share your information, not just the generic reports that you might get back from Qualtrics or SurveyMonkey or some of those types of things where they give you just a generic pie chart or bar chart or something. Um, th think about how you can really visualize the data 
and present it in a compelling way. So once you get past the analyzing stage, then we move into the feedback stage. And really what I hope you'll do is think about this feedback stage the entire time. From planning through collection and analyzing, you need to have a mind towards feedback. And how are you going to communicate this information back to the client? Um, in part, you need to think about it in terms of marketing. Like how are you going to sell and market yourself and your data back to the client? Because there's often resistance to the types of information that you're going to be sharing with them in the follow-up stage. So be thinking very clearly about how to feedback that data. And then of course we move into follow-up. And then ideally you have this ongoing process where the follow-up then leads back into additional planning and data collection. You refine your data collection, you collect more data. So in a long-term consulting engagement, uh, you'll have an ongoing Pro reciprocal process. In this class, of course, you're probably really just going through the cycle one time uh, in relation to your project. Okay, in the diagnosis stage, uh, some things to think about. Um, I really like this first bullet, discovery, dialogue, analysis, interpretation. They're all different terms for describing what's going on here. So that's what you're trying to do. Paint a picture, what's going on here. Diagnosis is an ongoing process of making sense of the data. Lots of organizations have data. Um, it's amazing how often it is that I'll go and work with an organization and I'll want to run a survey or something, but a lot of times they'll have, like they've run a previous survey or they, they have performance data they collect on an ongoing basis on their employees or things like that. And a lot of times they don't even do anything with it. So you definitely want to make sure you're asking your client, what data do you already have? What information do you already have that would be helpful to this project? Um, don't reinvent or recreate the wheel every time. Sometimes you can use existing data. Um, and part of the reason why they don't use the data they have is because organizations typically don't have sophistication with data. And a lot of times they just, they don't know how to make sense of it. So they have all this data. What do we do with it? We don't know. So it just kind of sits there. Your job, particularly if you're doing new data collection is to make sense of the data. Um, so we have deductive, inductive, and statistical approaches in the diagnosis um, stage. So the deductive, that's analysis conducted generally using a model such as the Burke-Lewin, the Nadler-Tushman, the Weisbord models, sorting data into pre-existing categories. So you, you've already kind of created themes or categories, um, and then you start to put your data into those buckets. Inductive is really the opposite. Analysis conducted developing categories from the data using the analyst's own labels. So for example, if you go to interviews or you do observations or you have open-ended responses on a survey um, that you look at what is presented to you and then you basically sort that and thematically uh, you sort that to put it into different buckets to try to better understand it and you create your own buckets rather than having some pre-existing buckets that you're trying to put the data into. And then statistical, I've, I've made reference to this already, uh, but analysis conducted using established statistical tests and techniques, often with the assistance of computer software. Um, if any of your projects require um, more advanced statistical methods, um, I'm happy to help you with that. So please don't hesitate to contact me. Uh, but like I said, I suspect for most of you, it'll largely be um, descriptive statistics, mean scores, distributions, some fairly basic um, figures, tables, charts, ways to, to visualize the data that is compelling. Um, so those are things for you to think about. Now, in the, in the uh, discussion for this week, you'll have a chance to think about and respond to a couple questions. Have you ever received difficult or painful feedback? How was it presented? How did the presentation of the feedback affect your understanding and internalization of it? And have you ever had to deliver difficult feedback to a friend, family member, or coworker? How did you do it? How was it received? What, if anything, would you do differently if you did it again? Now, these are really important questions um, in part because it helps you think through how you're going to use your own data and how you're going to frame your own recommendations to your client and how you're going to feed back the information that you find from the uh, data collection and the analysis that you do. Um, I hope that you have some empathy in how you think about that information and understanding that receiving even good feedback, but when it's poorly packaged, that's really hard um to deal with people 
get defensive. Um, people don't like change. People don't like problems being pointed pointed out to them. And so you have to find ways to frame particularly difficult feedback, um, even if it's constructive, you have to find ways to frame it in a way that they can hear it, that they can understand it, and that they will be inclined to try to move forward in a positive way with it. Um, so please think carefully about that and how you're going to frame your feedback. So we need to think about perceptions and concerns. Um, we need to identify repeated themes. We need to use the data to highlight the relevance of the problem that we're dealing with within the organization. Uh, and data always helps to support what, um, what we plan to do. And so rather than just saying, I feel like we should do X, what we want to do is say the data shows this, which indicates we should do X. That is much more powerful and more convincing to organizations. Um, influenceable or manageable. Uh, issues the client can change, wants to change. You need to think about what, pr think pragmatically about the data, about what it's telling you and about reasonable recommendations that can actually happen uh, within the context that you're working. Um, descriptive rather than evaluative data, um, selection. Um, we talked about this a little bit with sampling last time, but, uh, but narrow, not too broad. Keep your focus of your data collection narrow uh, to your particular um, subject and then always make sure that you're clearly communicating um, clearly um, that anything any of your labels any of your uh, any of the feedback coming from the data is sufficient and specific also think about how is it presented how other others and clients contribute where it does and where it doesn't happen think about the problems in all these different areas and how you're going to uh, help with those issues through your data so here's one uh, fig one graphic, one figure that can um, give you a sense of how the feedback cycle happens within organizations or even in any relationship. So feedback occurs. Um, is the energy created by the feedback? Like people are excited by the feedback and the data and they can say, wow, this, this is good stuff. If there's no energy created, there's no change. It doesn't matter how good the data is. It doesn't matter how compelling the results are or how interesting the results are or how strong the content of your recommendations are. Uh, none of that matters if ultimately you don't create energy in the feedback that you're providing. But if yes, what is the direction of the feedback? Um, sometimes there's energy created, but it's not great energy. Energy to deny or flight or fight the data. So sometimes it's defensive energy and people just get upset. And they say, you know, who is this person coming in trying to tell us how to run our organization? They don't really understand or know us. They don't have really clear data to back up their recommendations. Then they start pointing out faults in the data and all that kind of stuff. Um, so anxiety, resistance, no change occurs when energy is created to deny or fight the data. So what you want is to create energy that then is used to identify and solve the problems. Uh, if that happens, then you have to ask, do structures and processes turn that energy into action? So it's one thing to have good feedback that then leads to en some positive energy that then leads to um, people wanting to solve the problem. But then you have, that gets to where the rubber meets the road and people actually have to do the hard work of, of implementing change and changing structures and processes and practices um, and only when that energy maintains throughout this whole process does change occur. If not, then failure, frustration, no change, re-entrenchment, all of those sorts of things. Um, so think about this as you're going through your process uh, over the coming weeks to collect your data. Um, I'm almost out of time for today, so I'll just very quickly go over this last little bit. Um, but think about how you're going to construct that meeting. Um, don't project your own feelings. Uh, try to be careful with your language um, so that you don't create barriers where there doesn't need to be additional barriers uh, and come to an agreement on the meaning of the data and the next steps. Ultimately, that's your goal in the feedback meeting. Um, engage the client to take action. 
And then finally, make sure that you think about investment required, access, relevance, accuracy, and flexibility. Select a method that fits with the time available, the motivation of the client, and the severity of the problems. Don't overinvest. If you can do that, then I think you'll be in pretty good shape as you move forward with your projects. Thanks and have a great week.